During the summer of 2023, we moved to a remote Scottish Hebridean island to be its only two residents along with our two pet sheep and pair of cats. These remote islands seem to retain an old-fashioned rhythm and a charm which we find encouraging us to live a more frugal and simple life, the way man was perhaps more intended to. We have an ancient stone cottage to restore, veggies to grow, livestock to build up, fish to catch and smoke, a boat to buy, and much more. Step back in time with us at the Scottish Isle. It's a very frosty morning this morning. I had to go out late last night, around about 10, 11 o'clock, and I could see that it was starting to frost up. But I think this is the... Uh, it's probably the coldest that we've had it. I've never seen it this frosty. Excuse me not looking at the camera, but I'm uh, <laughs> I'm walking on iced rocks. Okay, well, what I'm going to go and do now is see if I can pick up some post that's arrived. It all depends on the situation with the tide and how bad it is. We get very, very strong currents at the moment and sometimes it's just not passable in a rowboat. It's just going to take you off. But I'm going to go and have a look. Looks beautiful out there, doesn't it? Oh, great. How the hell am I going to do this? I didn't bring the trolley. Bungee cords. Thank the oh, you, oh, thank the Lord for bungee cords. Oh, that hair. Don't do that one. It's freezing cold outside on bare fingers. Always surprises me how busy it is out here. What time is it? It's like half past eight, I think, on a Sunday morning. Still tons of traffic out here. Okay, I think we're done. I don't think they're coming off. So this is the post box as such. This is where our mail gets dropped. There should be a note on here. Katie wrote, I wrote, I actually painted one on the uh, box, but it's worn off with the rain. This is one of the old dwellings that we filmed back in early autumn, just passing it on the quad. So I thought I'd come and have a look at it in the uh, frost. Oh, it's a bit steep. If 
I just stand up on this. It's the old schoolhouse over there in Santa the Screen. Left the quad just behind those trees there. It's about nine o'clock now. So the sun's coming up over the, uh, the mountains. We, we get sunlight now from, I think it's nine to 3.30. The trusty steed. We need to give it a name, don't we? Or oh, what is it Sandor Clegane says in Game of Thrones about people who name their swords? Maybe it's the same with people who name their quads. I've come down here to trim that berberus there. Perfect time of year to do it if your hedge trimmer's working. Okay, well, I'll need to take this apart and see what's wrong with it because it's got a full battery. Last time I used it, I cleaned it and put it away and it was absolutely fine. It's one thing to start. Okay, well, I guess we'll just rake up some leaves instead.
says remove the housing from the thing and check that the coil is uh, take the battery out first back up the hill then After the festivities of Hogmanay, in which each Scottish household hopefully had its dark-haired first footer to cross the threshold, bearing a blessing of coal or cake, the old customs of Highland life settled back into their normal rhythm. As the menfolk went out to fish and farm, the women were left to keep their households ticking over. It was customary when a woman was married for her man to gift her a set of fire tongs to symbolise that she was now in trust of keeping the home in order. Monday was the wash day, beginning at first light and continuing the whole day, with no time for much else, so meals were cold leftovers from Sunday lunch. Tuesday was for ironing the big wash, and skill was needed to know when to bring the drying cloth in, as being natural fibres, everything needed ironing while still slightly damp, and was folded carefully in preparation for this. Wednesday to Saturday were filled with tasks such as mending, knitting, scrubbing, sweeping, basketry, cooking, preserving, net making, and so the list goes on. Hands were never idle until the Sabbath on Sunday, a strict day of rest. No work was undertaken throughout the Highlands and Islands, really until very recent times on that day. A friend from the Isle of Lewis remembers an elderly local lady who would patrol her area looking for any errant incomer who might foolishly hang out their washing on a Sunday. While another friend recalls being hired to redecorate a cottage, but forbidden to paint until five past midnight on Monday. Such was the deep and profound respect for their faith. The days, the seasons, the years would come and go, and births, marriages, feasts, deaths and wakes all played out in the same house, in front of the same hearth. The front door was always open to a visitor, and in this way the whole community would raise each other's children with equal discipline and wholesome morals. If your child came home complaining the neighbour clouted them on the ear, you could rest assured the punishment was merited. The rhythm of the old ways were based on trust and hard work, and the result of those values were security and commonwealth for all. Paul, 
Good girl. Most animals do that for food. She does it to get her foot itched. Yeah, she likes getting her foot itched. What do we have here? Apple crisps. Mm -hmm. She doesn't really like them, does she? She wants to give Bree some. She might take them. Bree, Bree, Bree. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bree. So we've uh, made the decision to get an another sheep in the spring. You get some from here. Give, give me some. Three, here. <laughs> Poor sheep. Yeah, because we... Um, so because Brie was bottle raised, she's... Uh, she doesn't care about being on her own. She's used to kind of oh, yeah, she's, hanging she's... out by herself. Um, because we had her, we had her in the, we raised her in the house and then moved her outside um, when she got too big and wasn't able to be toilet trained. Uh, so she doesn't mind being on her, on her own. We got her, we got her friend for her when she was six months old. But Crowdy came from a flock, so Crowdy is really flighty, and we're thinking that if Bree were to shuffle off this morsel coil first, then Crowdy would be, um, come on. Crowdy would be distressed being by herself. So well, you can't have one sheep. Yeah. So it needs to be. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm like, you know, half and half of it. You know, it's fun having a lamb, but I don't really want three sheep, just because of the uh, the expense and the upkeep. You know, it's enough keeping up with these two with what comes out of the back end of them, let alone having another one. But you can't just you can't we can't just have the, the two. Because, you know, eventually one of them is gonna go. And as you said, if it's Bree first, Crowdy would just run off. She would, should just run and keep running. If she can't see Bree, she yeah, bars she, for she her. She panics. Um Whereas Bree couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a, a local farmer who we've, uh, we're friends with, who's, he's the one that we get the, the hay from. And he said that he'll give us, a, give us an orphaned lamb in the spring. He said he's always, he's always got plenty of pet lambs. So we'll get, get, a, get another one a couple of days old and bottle raise it again, which will be nice for everyone to see. And then there will be three, won't there, little sheep? What have you been doing to your head? What's going to happen though with the fact that I'm not a scratching the, the, post. A lamb's going to try and suckle from the pair of them. Nah, not if we're mum. I know they'll both headbutt their way anyway, but they'll they'll come. It'll come to us for for grub, especially if it's inside and imprinted on us for you know, a few days. Why have you changed your coat? What from the sheepskin that I was yeah. wearing? Because it's missing buttons. Okay, so you it was a fashion. Decision. Well, well, buttons are kind of a necessity in a sheepskin coat, aren't they? Well, it's like I've got mine on and I'm, I'm actually too warm in this sun. Do you think, do you think we'll see the otters again anytime soon? We saw two otters running across the, uh, the foreshore here, the full length, two of them. We assume a mother and last year's only out last year's babies, but it was fully grown, wasn't it now? They're called pups, aren't they? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Or and they stay with them for 14 quilts. months. Yeah, about, about a year and a half, so... They, they just... They, they just come... They, well, it was the sheep that alerted us to their presence. <laughs> the sheep crapped their pants. They had no <laughs> idea what they were looking at as two otters scurried, literally from here, as I was running around the island, all the way across here. And across here and away. Now we didn't feel we had time to get the camera, but we were so engrossed in what we were seeing um, that we just didn't pick it up. Sometimes you just want to see these things and experience them, not be constantly thinking, quick, get the camera, get the camera. But these two were standing here watching them over there, and then as they came running this way, 
I've never seen them one so fast, bolted down here and hid behind the house where they stayed until I called them back. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're they've got a very distinctive sort of lolloping run. Uh, I said to well, Scott, yeah, it was flop, first. flopping in the water, wasn't they? As it was going. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a pine martin at first, but they, it was definitely two otters, and such an incredible thing to see in the wild, just running about on the shore. Well, they were two otters. They were two sea otters. Yeah. I know the difference between an otter and a pine martin. The pine martin that we've got hides underneath a little bridge that we've got here. I see him late at night. Well, you see his eyes looking back at you. So I'll just leave him and don't disturb him. <laughs> hey, yeah. Jeeves has made an appearance. What an incredible thing to see. What, Jeeves? Jeeves outside? Yeah, yeah that's true. Come on, Jeeves. <laughs> Jeeves here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hopefully I, we'll get to see the otters again. It'd be nice to get them on camera, but like you say, sometimes these things are just for your, your own eyes in well, the moment. I've seen them three times. You've seen them twice, yeah? Which must the mean they, they, they probably do have a den round about here. Well, they said, what was it, 12 miles, 11 miles? The territory. The territory, yeah. And they are territorial. Oh, the whole gang oh, come God, out Oh, God, everybody's now. out now. In the sunshine. Issa's um, just collapsed and fell over, look. <laughs> and we're going to be... Uh, we've been doing audio podcasts for our, our patrons for the last number of weeks um, and we're going to um, edit some of the content down and probably on Friday this week we're going to release that on YouTube for, for everyone to listen to. We thought it would be interesting for people getting to know us a bit better and learning our backgrounds and you can listen to it in the car or whatever. There won't be, uh, maybe we'll do a time lapse or something over the well, top. We've covered nearly all the subjects talked about in the first episode before but it's spread over, what, 40 episodes now. Um, remember when we had, uh, was it internet issues? When we did that walk across the island and mm -hmm. did a quick check that, yeah. A lot of people, most, most people didn't see that episode though. So I guess the, po the podcast, the Patreon podcasts are more complete and there is a, a lot more detail about the background, which we're not gonna put on uh, YouTube in full. But these edited versions of the podcast, I would expect they're going to be about 40 minutes long. Something like that, I would think, yeah. So it just gives, your for those that are interested, it will give them a little bit more information. Because one of the Patreon members said that after hearing the podcasts, it's helped to become more involved in the, the channel itself and uh, understand exactly what's going on and how we've got here and what's going on moving forward. Look at her, what's she eating? Sheep eat some of the mankiest stuff. Tickly tails. <laughs> this episode has been quad heavy. Yeah. Because it's been a quad heavy week this week for some reason. Lots of deliveries. Mm. We've just been over again, haven't we, to get the shopping. More deliveries. Apart from every who just seemed to dump her packages somewhere. Oh, don't get me started with every. Every, everybody who's in the UK understands our pain if we just mention the word every. <laughs> but I mean, basically, what's happening is the one of the couriers is dumping our parcels elsewhere, rather than than them bringing them here, and then putting online that he's actually posted them. Delivered them. Yeah. Which is what happens with a lot of stuff. They can't just can't be bothered bringing it to this postcode. So, well, it's one of two things. They can't be bothered coming all the way out here, or they just don't know where it is or to leave the post. So they're just delivering it to other people and saying it's been delivered here. How many times has it happened now? It's so not. A, it's been happen it's it's happened. It's happened now. It's happened three times in the last month. So you know it's the same person that's doing it, because unfathomably some every deliveries actually get through, but. Uh, yeah, whoever it is. Whoever it is. Good air, what's she doing, Mark? Do you want a brush? I swear, Bree, that if we put a harness on you or a saddle. <laughs> the size of it. She's a big sheep, aren't you, Bree? 
That stuff stopped dripping on her, didn't it? It's not stuff dripping on her. No, it stopped. I mean, she's no, not had any not. It's not. Oh, what it is it then? The, it was the lamps burning a wall. Okay. Well, don't you think that it's a bit, co uh, it's a bit of a coincidence that when I secure all of the cages underneath the lamps, it, stopped. it stops happening? Didn't really notice, to be honest, but they've been inside for for so long with the weather. Nice to see them out again. Look how she looks when she's brushed. <laughs> Both of oh, them. Yeah. Her head. It's like she's been to the bloody hairdressers. <laughs> she looks like a judge <laughs> with the wig, don't you? And your mutton chops, or maybe like a Victorian judge. No, no, she looks she looks like a like like a, what's it? Those those powdered wigs that they used to wear in the early Georgian period. Yeah. She looks like a, Marie Antoinette. No, I was thinking more like Prince George out of Blackadder. Don't listen to him, Crowdy.